So the next speaker will be uh, Enrique Ocho. Enrique is working in Salamanca, in Spain, and uh, is one of the best experts in uh, uh, the treatment of myeloma in the relapse setting, and especially with hashtag inhibitors. So please, Enrique. Thank you very much, Philippe, and thank you very much to all the organizers for the invitation to speak about the acetylase inhibitors. I think it's not an easy task because, well, I understand that they are after proteasome inhibitors, after imids, after more coronal antibodies, but even they are after allogenic transplantation, which is quite <laughs> striking. So, well, let's, I think uh, HDAC inhibitors, they have uh, a honor, and I always use that, which is that they are the first mechanism of action to be approved after proteasome inhibitors and imids. And I know that they have a bad name, as Arnon said previously, with allogenic transplantation, but I will try to convince you that there is still a role for these agents in multiple myeloma. Well, epigenetics, well, this is my disclosures, but epigenetics are the mechanisms that uh, direct or says which genes need to be silenced or need to be expressed in a, in, a, in a given cell. There are several mechanisms of epigenetics, but I will just focus on histone modifications in multiple myeloma because they are really the only ones that are really now being targeted in this disease. And why the acetylase inhibitors in myeloma? Well, because of that, because there is a deregulation of the, of the HDAX in multiple myeloma, and if we compare in gray the normal plasma cells versus the, in black, the myelomatous plasma cells, all the 11 HDAX have an overexpression in multiple myeloma. So there is a deregulation in multiple myeloma. And that's why among the plethora of agents we have now, we have been exploring multiple myeloma, there is a small family here which, with one agent in red, which is panovinostat, which is the acetylase inhibitors that have been approved uh, in, for this disease. The mechanism of the acetylase inhibitor is quite complex. They can target histones, and this is the basis for the epigenetic mechanism of these drugs. But they also target non-histone proteins, and we will speak about that along the presentation by targeting P53, tubulin, or HSP19, for instance. So there is a complex mechanism targeting different proteins, and this, uh, this is quite broad mechanism that end, uh, ends up with an antitumoral effect. Several years ago, we published the activity, the preclinical activity of panovinostat in multiple myeloma in cell lines, patient samples, in vivo, <laughs> and even in bone density, in the bone disease, myeloma-associated bone disease. And several other groups did the same with other diacetylase inhibitors. However, when this preclinical data was taken into the clinics, the activity of all these drugs in monotherapy was almost none. So only one patient responded to panovinostat. But fortunately, this was not abandoned. So because of this rationale, which is the synergistic inhibition of the proteasome and the other mechanism of degradation of, of the proteins, which is the aggresomes. We can block these two mechanisms of degradation of proteins by using proteasome inhibitors and using the acetylase inhibitors. Here we have the HDAC6. So we would end up with this double inhibition in a synergistic accumulation of misfolded proteins, which are quite, to quite toxic for the cells. And this is the rationale for the combination of the, of the acetylase inhibitors plus bortezomib. And this was the basis for the development of the Panorama 1 study that randomized patients to receive bortezomib dexamethasone versus bortezomib dexamethasone but plus panovinostat. And here I want to focus, or I want to stress two uh, issues in this trial. One, it, it was quite an intensive schedule of administration of, of the treatment of bortezomib, IV bortezomib with intensive administration of also panovinostat. And also it was a fixed duration of treatment, for 24 plus 24 weeks, almost one year, but fixed duration of the treatment in this trial. The results show that there was a four-month advantage in the progression-free survival for the panovinostat arm, but when we focused on the, on the patients for which the drug was approved, which was bortezomib, patients previously exposed to bortezomib and imix and to more than prior, four, two prior lines of therapy, the pr progression of free survival advantage goes up to eight months. So I think this is quite interesting. But what was the problem for this, of this uh, trial? It was the toxicity. And the problem was that one-third of the patients in this trial 
in the Panorama Troy, Pan Panovino Stat, Bortosomic Dex tra arm, discontinued treatment due to adverse events, which is quite a high rate of discontinuation due to toxicity, mainly diarrhea, asthenia, and thrombocytopenia. And this was the case, the situation, or the reason why this drug have a bad name, as Arnold said for the other in the previous presentation. We can ask one question to these drugs. Do they have an activity in bortezomib refractory patients because, because this trial excluded bortezomib refractory patients? And, the, and this was solved by this trial, the Panorama 2 trial, that was conducted by Dr. Richardson, in which they saw that in bortezomib refractory patients, this combination has 35% overall response rate with a nice PFS and overall survival. So we can say that probably the addition of panovinostat can overcome the refractoriness to bortezomib in these patients. Okay, so these are the data we have for panovinostat bortezomib plus dexamethasone. And now, I think if I ask how many of you are using, have used this drug in outside clinical trials, I will not ask this because it will be not very good probably. So. I will try now to say, how can we improve this? How can we, how can we make you or we to use these drugs in the clinical situation? First, that we have to improve the administration of these drugs. Probably I told you that these drugs were the, in this trial, bortezomib was given IV, so probably the use of subcube bortezomib would be much better. We are doing trials with that. We will have a better adapted schedule more active management of adverse events such as diarrhea or the asthenia, or early dose reductions as soon as the patients have any of these adverse events. I think this would make a difference in the treatment of these patients. The second possibility is to use other drugs for combination apart from bortezomib. And in this regard, there are several different combinations that are being tested in this with panovinostat or other uh, diacetylase inhibitors. We have combinations with carfilzomib, with the oral pleotosome inhibitor ixazomib, with an all-oral combination, ixazomib, panovinostat, dexamethasone. Several drugs, several trials have been using lenalidomide plus the acetylase inhibitor, quite toxic at the beginning because of, sort of the intensive schedules, but now they are much better tolerated, and even triplet combinations, VTD, KRD, and even VRD in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma. So I think with all these novel combinations, we are improving the toxicity profile and we are improving the activity of these combinations. Probably in the future we will have more robust data to support these combinations. What else can we do for the, the acetylase inhibitors? We can take advantage of several or some attractive molecules or mechanisms. And here I want to tell you a, a few words of one drug we have been tested in the lab which is, I think, quite interesting. It's a molecule, Edo S101, which is a combination of vetnamastin, in which they, we have added, they have added a HDAC radical to the, mo to the molecule. What is the rationale for that? The rationale is that the HDAC inhibitor would open the chromatin, then the alkylate or vetnamastin can exert its function more potently or more heavily. So we have demonstrated that there is a great DNA damage with, ven with a D EDO, more than bendamastin in a comet assay, which is that. These are, it means that we are breaking the DNA. That's why it looks like comets with the tails. And there is a great induction of DNA damage. Moreover, we have seen that apart from breaking the DNA, we are also, with this drug, we are abrogating the DNA repair. So we break the DNA and the cell is not able to repair this DNA. I will not go in detail into these experiments, which are quite complex, but we have seen this dual mechanism for EDO. And this translated into a high activity, preclinical activity of the drug, in vitro and also in vivo, with a great delay in the tumor growth, an advantage in survival, even in big tumors. And in a model from Dr. Bersagel, it is the only drug with single agent activity in a very multi-drug resistant model, or a mutant model for this group. So I think this drug may have a role in multiple myeloma by using this, the acetylase inhibitor plus the alkylator activity of bendamastin. And this drug is all now being in, in phase one studies. What else can we do for the acetylase inhibitors? We can use more specific the acetylase inhibitors. There is a 
concern that maybe the toxic effect of these drugs is due to the broad activity targeting or the PAN-DAC inhibitors targeting all the 11 H-DACs. So we have now started to use some diacetyl-6-DAC-6 specific inhibitors, which are this protein here. Diacetyl-6 is the one responsible for the aggression formation. And based on that, there was the recolinostat, which was this specific diacetyl TAC6 specific inhibitor was combined with bortezomib, and this was the trial that combined, the, that tested this combination, and you can see that the response rate was 45%, even 30% in bortezomib refractory patients. Again, we see that it can overcome the bortezomib refractoriness. These are good data. But what was interesting for this drug is that despite this being the, the rational, the combination of the aggressome and proteasome, when this drug was combined with imids in these two trials with lenalidomide and pomalidomide, the activity was much higher with most of the patients responding to the combination with Lendex or pomalidomide dexamethasone, which was not the one that was defined at the beginning. And what was, why was that? Probably what is supposed is that this synergy comes from a dual down regulation of IRF4 and MIC when using both combinations, both drugs together, the diacetyl inhibitor and the imids. And they, they can decrease these two pro-survival proteins of the tumor plasma cell. And finally, I will go to the end, to the final part of my presentation, which is the, the last thing I think it would be very important for the acetyl inhibitors. We have been talking about, about immunotherapy, monoclonal antibodies. We have, been, of course, algenic transplantation, but also I think that the acetyl inhibitors have an immune effect. And there are several reports suggesting that. We have done some work in the lab, but also there are these reviews that they are very clear, as you can see. But, well, that is to say the message is that all the different acetyl inhibitors, they have an activity on CD8, NK cells, macrophages, and the same here. So they have a broad activity on the immune cells. That's why I think they have an immune effect. And to try to convince you of that, I will just tell you a couple of patients we, have, we published some years ago in, that were treated in the initial phase 1-2 trial with fanovinostat, bortezomib, and dexamethasone. And I want to bring that this phase 1 trial, which is the basis for the Panorama 1 trial, because in this trial, fanovinostat was given until progression as maintenance after using the intensive schedule. This is a, a young woman, old woman, refractory after a first transplant and then a second transplantation. She relapsed, and here we started panovinostat plus bortezomib, eight cycles with a nice response, complete response, and then panovinostat maintenance for more than five years with a disease incomplete response. And the other one is this other, also a young man with, that was given VTD six cycles with a chief PR, but then progressed previous to the total stem cell transplantation. So he was refractory to bortezomib and thalidomide. Very bad prognosis patient. We started bortezomib and panovinostat dexamethasone. Again, refractory to bortezomib, but bortezomib again with panovinostat, good response. BGPR with a small component remaining, 0.2. And then panovinostat dex maintenance. He, this is five years, but now the patient is eight years under panovinostat and dexamethasone with excellent tolerability and with this small M component stay quite stable. So I think this speaks about the, probably the use of panovinostat of these drugs as maintenance setting. So to summarize, I can say that the acetylase inhibitor has this honor to be the first novel mechanism of action to be approved in myeloma after proteasome inhibitor and imids. And I think these agents really have a role in multiple myeloma tre treatment. They synergize with PI and imids and can overcome bortezomib refractoriness. But we, can, we have to optimize the use with novel optimized combinations, probably use of more specific inhibitors, take advantage of novel mechanisms, that this, this EDO, the DNA repair mechanism, and the immune effects make them particularly attractive for the maintenance setting. And with that, I want to thank you for your attention.